that is flat, just scary. As I walk down the aisle, everybody stops talking, just you know, <laughs> scares me. <laughs> um, first of all, we want to say welcome back to Pastor Paul and his wife. Um, what, 3,400 miles in, what, three weeks? You know, wow, that's putting some miles on. Seeing a lot of good country, though. I've seen a lot of nice pictures from you. Welcome back. Um, there's a road trip coming up November 12th to Shipsawani. Uh, see either Barb or Deb if you are interested in going. Um, our big news today is trunk or treat. We had a fabulous turnout. We had 287 people go through there. You know, just amazing. We had 24 volunteers. We had the Wyoming police. We had the Wyoming fire department. I mean, it was just a huge, huge success. Thank you for everybody that put in an effort on that. Um, we're going to have a short congregational meeting after the morning service. Um, even before you go get your coffee, just stay seated. The deacons will pass out some ballots. If you are not a member, you're welcome to stay and see how we do it, but please let the deacon know you're not a member. If you are visitors, you're welcome to stay and see how we operate, you know, uh, we had a very good crowd tonight, and I'm happy to see that. After we get the ballots in, the elders will collect them at the door as you leave. So as soon as you complete your ballot, you may leave. Um, I don't think I got much more other than next week is Lord's Supper. You know, week after, 17th. Well, I'm trying to make, make long weeks here. Yeah, <laughs> long weeks. Okay. So, other than that, Pastor Paul, you're up. Right. Ellen and I did have a great time, and we are grateful that you gave us that time off. It was a wonderful trip. We did travel through many states, all the way down to Florida and back up again. So, we had a, a great time, and uh, we put a lot of miles on our motorhome and on our old bodies. So, we... <laughs> I'm glad I didn't have to take the car off every stop. You know, that's the hard part. You got to take the car off, put it back on, and then it's nice to just leave it on there and uh, drive to the next spot. But anyway, thanks again for allowing us to do that. It's great to be here to worship today, and it's uh, good to see all of you and to worship together with you. Our God is such a great God, and we come to worship Him, the God who loves us forever and ever. And so we're going to think about that today, and we're going to praise him. We're also going to think about the fact that he reigns. Uh, in Psalm 99, we read, The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim, let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion, he's exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name, he is holy. We have come to worship our great and holy God. Let's stand for his greeting. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God has greeted you with those words. Greet each other in worship today.
was worth driving 3,400 miles to sing that song <laughs> and to know that truth. What a marvelous thing. Because Christ has done all of that for us, because he has defeated sin and death, and because we have eternal hope in him, how then should we live? We should live like this. I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals, nor the alien within your gates, so that your manservant and maidservant may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and the Lord brought you, your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Honor your father and mother as the Lord God has commanded you so that you may live long in the, and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not set your desire on your neighbor's house or land, his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. What you shall do is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Well, that summarizes all of the law and the prophets and everything that God has written. When we love like God loves. And so we're called to do that. Yet we know we haven't kept all those commands, don't we? When I read through that list of commands, I know that I've broken some of them. So have you. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of all of our sins. And we know that because that's why he sent Jesus Christ into this world, that we would be redeemed through his blood. Trust in him with all your heart. Let's praise our God in song again.
Let's call upon our God in prayer. We will worship your holy name. You alone are worthy of our praise. You are great and glorious. You rule over all. We thank you that you have put your son Jesus Christ on the throne and his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and that we, through your grace and mercy, have become part of your kingdom. Help us always to trust in you in all things, to know that you are reigning over all the nations, not just over us, but over all the nations, over every ruler, over everyone, whether it's a local authority or a state or country authority, whether it's rulers in other nations that seem to be opposed to us. And Father in heaven, we are thankful that you rule, that you show your power and your majesty. Some may have the same anxiety about what's going to happen in the next few days as we vote if we haven't already and the president is chosen a new one father in heaven you have already ordained the person that you have called to this position we may not understand why we certainly don't know who at this point, but you do. Let us take comfort in that truth that you are the one that appoints. You called Cyrus your servant, even though he was a wicked ruler. You used Nebuchadnezzar for your purposes. You used Darius and Cyrus to send your people back you are a God who is in control of all the things of this world. And for that, we are so thankful. May we today put our trust in you and in your love that is forever and ever. May we trust in you only. May we not trust in anyone who comes to power. May we not put our hope in anyone but you. May we know that you are our victorious God. And we pray for our country because our country is deeply divided. There are those, and they are many, who do not value life, who do not care about morality, who do as they please and run roughshod over others. There are those who are greedy. There are those who are even violent. Father, we pray for our country that after this election is over, we may live together in a way that reflects who we are. Father, we know that you love our country because we can see it in the many blessings that you have poured out upon us. We know that in principle, the practices of our country are often consistent with what you want in your word. <clears throat> Yet, many people use freedom to do as they please, and certainly that offends you. Thank you for the freedom that we have in Christ. May we always use our freedom to proclaim Christ, to live as Christ, to honor Christ, so that you will be glorified. We eagerly await the day when you will come on the clouds in all your glory and all your power in all of the things that are evil in this world will be banished forever and ever. We're grateful that that day is certain to come because you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And in the meantime, people struggle with illnesses and families, friends, some of them very severe, with great difficulty. We pray, Father, for deliverance. 
We pray for those, too, who have been grieved by death and the loss of loved ones, that you will comfort them as only you can comfort, that the victory that is in Jesus Christ will lift them up. The encouragement of people will help them along the way, and they will know your peace, a peace that passes all understanding. And so we pray for your blessing upon those who are struggling. Father, we're, we're so grateful that we can bring anything to you, and you have already prepared great and good answers that will give glory to you and will be for our good. Even if we cannot see it at this time, we know that all that you do is for your people and those that you love with an everlasting love. Help us to put our trust in you, to know victory in Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. We give our gifts now. The offerings will be first for the general fund, then the second for the Mission Faith Promise Fund, and we'll also do our noisy offering for the Esther School in Zambia. Before we sing the next song, I have a prayer request I was just given. So I'm going to pray that, and then we'll go into the next song, okay? Let's pray together. Father in heaven, there's a young man by the name of that is going through a time of testing where he's uncertain of his faith and where he's being challenged by the evil one. 
Father, we all need to be rescued from the evil one, for he is powerful and mighty and deceptive and full of rage. We pray for this young man that he may find peace and hope in Jesus Christ, who alone can defeat the devil. Bless him and everyone who is needing rescue today. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our scripture this morning is Psalm 136, and you have a part in the reading of this psalm. I'm quite convinced that when the psalmist wrote this psalm, he expected it to be used in worship and for the people to respond, his love endures forever. They probably would have simply said in Hebrew, chesed, one word, his love that endures forever. But what I want you to do is say it in English so everybody understands it. And I'll talk more about chesed as we get into this message today. So I'll read that part and then you respond always with his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Give thanks to the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. To him who alone does great wonders. 
who by his understanding made the heavens, who spread out the earth upon the waters, who made the great lights, the sun to govern the day, the moon and stars to govern the night, to him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, and brought Israel out from among them with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm to him who divided the Red Sea asunder and brought Israel through the midst of it but swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea to him who led his people through the desert who struck down great kings and killed mighty kings, Sion, king of the Amorites, and Og, king of Bashan, and gave their land as an inheritance, an inheritance to his servant Israel, to the one who remembered us in our low estate, and freed us from our enemies, and who gives food to every creature. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. Well, it might be obvious what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the love of the Lord which endures forever. When we say the Lord's Prayer, we end it by saying, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We can say that with confidence. We can state that with confidence because his love endures forever. So we say amen to that because his love endures forever. His kingdom is a kingdom of love. His power is displayed in his love. He deserves all glory because of his love. Thanksgiving is going to be celebrated this month. And I want to start our reasons for Thanksgiving by talking about his love that endures forever. I've often done this in churches where I've asked in the month of November for everybody to turn little cards into me, and, and on those cards they would write what they were thankful for, and that was always a lot of fun to find out what people were thankful for. Many of them were really interesting. I loved the ones the children would turn in because they were so honest about what they really loved and what they were thankful for. You know, they would, they would talk about their pets, they would talk about their favorite toy, they would talk about their friends, and... Even adults I found very interesting because they would talk about all sorts of things that they were thankful for. Many people, of course, knowing that it was going to come to me, would be saying things like, I'm thankful for Jesus Christ, and I'm glad they are, and I'm sure they are. But, you know, they know they're sending it to a pastor, but children don't think that way. You know, they just think about, oh, I'm thankful for this. I love it. But I wanted to do something that I've done before and lead you up to Thanksgiving by thinking about things that we often are thankful for, but we might not express that as often. We might not say it. So I want to look at some profound and sublime things that we find in Scripture that we should always be thankful for. And the first of those is God's love. God's love that is forever. Because His love never changes. It's His very character. God is love. Now, we're going to look at that from an Old Testament perspective today more than from a New Testament perspective. Though the love doesn't change, the word is different though. In the New Testament, we usually use the word agape for love. In the Old Testament, it's chesed. That that's H has almost got a C in front of it when you say it as a Hebrew. Anyway, that's what I was taught. I mean, I, I just go by what my professors tell me, and it was chesed. So, we're going to talk about chesed. It's a very important word in the Old Testament. 250 times that word is used in the Old Testament. 
So I'm going to look at every time it's used, and by about 3.30 this afternoon, we'll have our congregation meeting. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> not all 250 times. I did look at most of them, though, in preparation for this sermon, in order that I would get a, a fuller background of the meaning of chesed. Because it's always translated, often translated, his love endures forever. It's an everlasting love, an everlasting, but it's not always like that. 250 times. It's often, in older translations, it would be translated steadfast love. Now, our newer translations don't say that, but I'm going to quote now one of the verses that has that in the older translations as steadfast love. And so that's for, this is from Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7. The Lord, the Lord... The compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. His love doesn't change. His love is steadfast. Now, when was this said? That's important. When did this statement get made about his love? You remember the story of the golden calf, many of you, I'm sure. That's the context of this statement. Moses came down with the Ten Commandments, and he breaks them because he's outraged because he sees the people in revelry dancing around a golden calf that Aaron had made. He's, he's angry. He's upset. God is not happy with us either. Many of them die because of what they did. But nevertheless, in that context, Israel had to know a truth that never changed. That his steadfast love was there. The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, Rebellion and sin. That's what steadfast love is. It, re, it forgives wickedness, rebellion, and sin. And that's what Israel was doing. They started to worship an idol. They were in outright rebellion against God. And God had to remind them who he is. He's the God of steadfast love. No matter what we do, God's character does not change. He remains a God of steadfast love. That's why we all sin, and we sin sometimes grievously, but God's character does not change. He forgives us when we turn to him and we seek his forgiveness. Yes, there will be consequences for our sin, just as there was with Israel. But they were forgiven. In fact, Moses went up again and got the law again, and they presented it before the Lord and before the people. Because even though he judged them, he did not change. He was a God of steadfast love. And you also can know that in your own life. It's easy to come to church and not be following Christ the way you should. But you know what you're doing. God knows what you're doing. But he also knows, and his love is steadfast. His love is steadfast. He rescues us again and again from our own foolishness and sin. So that's the first thing I want you to know about it. It's part of the character of God. His love is steadfast. Here's the second thing in the way it's used in the Old Testament at various times. It's used as kindness. You find that in Joshua 2, verses 12 through 14. And these words are said, first of all, by Rahab. Now then, 
Please swear to me by the Lord that you show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all belong to them, and that you will save us from death. And the spies respond, our lives are your lives. The men assured her, if you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. His love is kindness, specifically kindness that rescues from death. You know the story. The spies went into the land. They wanted to check out Jericho. So they went in. They were reported as being there. But Rahab hid the spies. And then he asked, she asks, that they show kindness to her as she showed kindness to them. Because chesed, or love, is kindness. And specifically, she saved the spies from death, for they certainly would have killed them if they found them. And then God showed his kindness to her and her family by saving them from death. In fact, even going beyond that, so much so that Rahab became part of the line of Jesus Christ because this is the kindness of God. So when you think of that word love, you should also think of the word kindness because it shows the kindness of God who his character is such that he's always kind. A third thing and way that it's used in the Old Testament is security. David writes this in Psalm 21, verse 7, For the king trusts in the Lord through the unfailing love of the Most High and will not be shaken. David was resting his security as king, not in his power, not in his army, but in his Lord. That was his security as king. That's what he was trusting in, the unfailing love of the Lord. Because a person who is in that place of the unfailing love of the Lord cannot be shaken, cannot be destroyed. And so that's another way it's used, to think of security. Now the way it's most frequently used is the way that we find in the psalm. And it endures forever. That's used 42 of the 250 times in the Old Testament. 42 of them are, that is, love, love endures forever. Here's the first time we meet this in 1 Chronicles 16, verse 34. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. The context of that is when David brought the ark into Jerusalem. And he declares that they should give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. And so that's the first time that we encounter it. Now the second, last time that we encounter it is interesting to me also because it's in Jeremiah 33, verse 11. Give thanks to the Lord Almighty, for the Lord is good, his love endures forever. Now, if you know anything about the time that prophet Jeremiah wrote, it was not a good time in Israel. They were all being taken captive. Many have already gone down to Babylon. The country was being destroyed. And in that context, Jeremiah declares, give thanks to the Lord Almighty, for the Lord is good. His love endures forever. Nebuchadnezzar might have thought he was almighty but only God is almighty. I found that fascinating as I was going through this study that the first time had to do with the ark of God coming into Jerusalem. In other words, God saying, I am with you. And then in the end, when they seemed to be deserted and everything was taken away, he's saying again, I'm with you forever. Nothing is ever going to change. I'm going to be your God forever. It's going to endure. But then we have our psalm, 
And I'm not going to even look at every verse of it. Obviously, there's thanksgiving for creation. That shows his love. There's thanksgiving for deliverance from Egypt. That shows his love. But I want to do these few to think about this morning. Give thanks, for the Lord is good. Everything the Lord does is right and just and good. He forgives all our sins. He heals all our diseases. Every blessing is from the Father of light. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. Sometimes I don't think we see this as clearly as maybe it was in the Old Testament time where there were all these idols that you could visibly see them and they were there. But rest assured, there's plenty of idols in our world today. Some of them are sports figures. Some of them are singers. We were just in Indianapolis. Uh, some swift person was there. And uh, a lot of people were talking about that. And uh, I didn't realize what was going on as car after car went by us with all sorts of stuff written over it about the concert that was going to happen the next two nights and being there and all that. Well, some people, you know, think that they ought to decide their life and everything about some celebrity who sings or somebody who's in movies. You name it. We have God's galore in our culture. But there is only one God, and he is the God of gods. Whether athletes or not respond and recognize God, whether musicians or actors, he is the one to give thanks to. He's the God of gods. He's the God of love. He's so different than all the other gods. Now, if you would study all the other religions of this world, you'd find out that all of the other gods are harsh compared to our God. They have demands that people must meet all the time. I, I, just as an example, under Islam, they have to bow specifically different times of the day or he will be mad at them and he will not. I mean, I've seen in a parking lot in a difficult place, a man unroll his, his rug and bow in prayer to Allah, because that's his master. Now, I pray to God all the time. I prayed a lot as I was driving along, and I'd seen the glory of his creation. I mean, the trees were magnificent wherever we went. I prayed about people who were suffering because of the hurricanes that went through the area we were in. We saw the devastation. Because I was praying to the real God. He's a God of love. He cares about people. He wants them to come to know him and his goodness and grace. He's not like the gods of this world. Our psalm tells us that he created everything that is. All other gods are creations of people's imaginations, but God is the creator, and he stands apart. He is the God of all gods. Don't ever forget that. When it comes to thanksgiving, give thanks that you know the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. There is not a ruler in this world that is not subject to Jesus Christ. Not one. Doesn't make any difference if they believe it or not. They cannot act or breathe or do anything outside of the will of Jesus Christ. I don't understand all the mystery of why he allows terrible rulers to do terrible things. You know, Malachi had that same problem in the Old Testament. How can you send these Babylonians? They're worse than us. You're going to punish us with those terrible people? Well, I don't always understand God either. You don't always understand God either, but we do know this about God. He rules over all. He is the Lord of lords. These people are just under him. They will die. He lives forever. 
They, their kingdoms will fall. His is an eternal kingdom. He is Lord of lords. So yes, I have my choice in this presidential election. I'm sure you have yours. But no matter which one gets elected, there is only one Lord. His name is Jesus Christ. He's on the throne. That will never change. And his love endures forever. It may not be obvious to us why he's letting happen what happens, but his love endures forever. Certainly wasn't obvious every step of the way to those people who carried off in the captivity in Babylon. We were blessed to go see the sight and sound presentation of Daniel in the faith of those people in the face of being captive. It was a wonderful thing. But we too, as you approach the election, remember this truth. Your citizenship and my citizenship is not here on earth. Yeah, I have a temporary citizenship. I even have an address. But my real citizenship, your real citizenship is in heaven with the Lord of lords, the King of kings, and that will not change. That is our eternal hope and his love endures forever. Even when we don't think it's happening, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heavens. That's the last verse of the psalm. Give thanks to the God of heaven. Our Father is in heaven. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, is in heaven. He alone is worthy of all of our thanks. His power is for us, and his is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. So as Thanksgiving approaches, think often of these truths. Dwell upon the fact that the Lord's love is an everlasting love. And think about that. All the other things, all the good gifts that come to you are from him and his everlasting love. Live your life in encouragement. Give thanks to the Lord that he so loved the world that he sent his son Jesus Christ to rescue this world from sin and death. And you know him. And you belong to him. Give thanks that his love excels all other loves. Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, fill us with your hope as we think about your love. Fill us with thankfulness as we think about your love. Keep us from doubting and fear and fill us, O Heavenly Father, with your goodness and your grace. Thank you that your love endures forever. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing Love Divine, All Loves Excel.
parting blessing, but you're not going to part. You're just going to sing after that one more song and sit down so we can have the congregational meeting. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.